Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and I'm titling this Hashimoto's thyroiditis for beginners, and we're going to be talking about treatment, what causes it, and how to approach it if you have it. And we're already up to lesson number 10 in my thyroid beginner series. So if you haven't watched episodes 1 through 9, I would recommend that you go back and look at them. Uh, they're they're much like this one. They're kind of short and sweet, and they contain a lot of the pertinent information without any of the sort of filler stuff. So that's that's my goal, and that's what we're going to be doing with Hashimoto's today. So let's talk about it, and I've got a bunch of figures that we're going to be going over today. So first of all, what is Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Um, and you guys might know a little bit about it, but I'm just going to shed some basic information here. So first of all, it is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. And what that means is your body produces antibodies against a specific tissue in your body. Now, usually this is the result of confusion on the part of your immune system. Your immune system doesn't want to attack your own tissue. It's not what it was designed to do. In fact, it's supposed to kill bad things that enter into your body. But what happens is sometimes for a variety of reasons, and we'll talk about that because these are the triggers of Hashimoto's, but also other autoimmune disease. Your body becomes confused, and your immune system has a hard time differenti differentiating between what your own tissue looks like and what foreign invaders look like. And there can also be so, not so much a lack of confusion as a cross-reactivity between the two. And so, for instance, you might develop antibodies. Your body creates antibodies to kill a certain bug or bacteria, and that bug or bacteria happens to look like your immune system. So the body is just killing the good thing, killing the bad thing, and in the process, damaging your own body, which is obviously less than ideal. So it's, a, it's an autoimmune disease, and it stems from issues in the immune system. Now the problem is, if it's left untreated, I mean, if you do nothing, eventually your own body will destroy your thyroid gland. And then, then you will result with, in a condition known as hypothyroidism. And, and so that's, that's the big deal. That's why we care, uh, because it results in damage to the thyroid gland. So... We'll talk about the triggers of Hashimoto's, but I want to show you just the antibodies here for just a second. So traditionally, diagnosis uh, consists of testing for these antibodies. And now, when you look at these antibodies, thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies, there are other antibodies, uh, TSHR, and but that's for a different disease. Just so you know, there are other antibodies to your thyroid. But the two that we're interested in are thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Now what this means is your body is producing antibodies that can go, that, that look like parts of your thyroid gland. And so if these antibodies are elevated, there's a very high likelihood that you may have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now you can have situations in which you don't have to have elevated antibodies and you can still have Hashimoto's. Okay, so that exists. And then also there are situations in which you can have elevated antibodies but not be destroying your thyroid gland. So it's not the most, uh, accurate test, if you will, but it's a good way and an easy way to test to see if you have this issue. And so, uh, anyway, these are the these are the antibodies, so just put that in the back of your head. But let's talk for a second about how you diagnose it and what triggers um, Hashimoto's. So the, the I would say, after talking to hundreds and hundreds of people, I think probably one of the most common causes would be stress. And this stress is usually extreme. So in my experience, and I because I always ask, I try to figure it out, Usually I hear something along the lines of uh, a family member of mine died and I was spun into a spiral or I was taking care of a dying family member, usually like a mother or a father. And then, you know, when they pass, it's a very traumatic and, and a hard time for the patient. And that usually results in this triggering. It could also be from losing a, jo a job. And another big one I see is divorce. So this sort of extreme stress on your body can trigger autoimmune disease. Another big cause would be infection, so especially viral. So Epstein-Barr virus uh, has been implicated in, in causing a number of autoimmune diseases, and one of those is Hashimoto's. And so you can't really do anything about it. If you're exposed to Epstein-Barr, you're exposed, and, and many of us are. So, But there's a number of people who, when exposed, that triggers their immune system to, to kind of kill their own thyroid. And then there's a number of people that just doesn't do anything. Another big cause is increased intestinal permeability. And that's, a, that's the official name for what you might know as leaky gut. And what happens is your, your uh, gut is inflamed and it allows things to go inside, be absorbed into your body that shouldn't be there. And then that triggers the immune system. And then, of course, there's genetics. They, these play a role. High iodine plays, plays a big role. Uh, environmental toxins or toxicants. So just being exposed to things that your body doesn't know how to deal with or you shouldn't have been exposed to. All of these things can trigger 
uh, the immune system just to go a little bit haywire and that's what causes causes it to attack itself and so oftentimes the trigger of Hashimoto's is not the most important part and the, the reason I say that is because you can't always go back and treat that issue so for instance if you're if a death of a loved one triggered your Hashimoto's you can you can try to manage your stress going forward but it's not like you can go back in time and change that event or prevent it from happening and the same thing with the infection so if you get exposed to an infection it triggers Hashimoto's well, you're just going to have Hashimoto's. Now, you can try and, and in some cases, treat that infection, but not, it doesn't always stick around or your body can suppress it automatically and the damage has been done um, once it starts. So it's important to kind of get an idea as to what caused yours, but it's not the, the, the most important factor. So really quickly, I want to talk um, a little bit about how Hashimoto's is different from hypothyroidism. So what you have to realize is that Hashimoto's can cause hypothyroidism, um, but they're but they're two kind of separate entities. And now it is estimated that as many as 50 to 90 percent of patients who have hypothyroidism, ha the the cause of that hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's, which is a m huge percentage. Okay. And so if you have hypothyroidism and you haven't been tested for Hashimoto's, you should, you should definitely do that. And and the reason for that is those with Hashimoto's tend to also have other autoimmune diseases. They tend to have a higher incidence of uh, low stomach acid production in their which affects absorption of medications and so on. And they also tend to have um, iron deficiency and other nutrient deficiencies uh, at a higher rate than just regular hypothyroidism patients. Okay, so if you have hypothyroidism and you haven't, make sure you check for Hashimoto's. Now again, um, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. Not all causes of hypothyroidism um, are, are the result of, of autoimmune disease, but this one does cause that. Uh, and then in terms of treatment, it's the same once it's advanced. Okay, we'll talk about treatment in just a second. Um, which is to say you can use thyroid medication to treat it because once your thyroid is damaged, if you can't reverse the damage, well, then you have to take supplemental um, thyroid medication. That's just sort of how it works. But let's talk about the, the more nuanced treatment and the conventional versus the integrative approach. And this is where things kind of get really interesting, especially if you're a patient. So the conventional approach to Hashimoto's thyroiditis is summed up in three words, and that is wait and see. And I, I'm not kidding you, that's what they will do. So if you come in and you have Hashimoto's, in fact, most doctors don't even test for it because they don't think it affects treatment. What they'd rather do is they'd rather wait until your body destroys enough of your own thyroid gland that you then require thyroid medication. So they skip the whole trying to address the antibodies and then just treat you with thyroid medication. That is the conventional approach. And obviously there's a lot of problems with that. But let's talk about the more integrative approach because what can you do? That's really what you're interested in. You don't want to just wait around and wait for your body to destroy itself. You want to do something, right? You want to be, you want to, want to get in and get in there and try to impact the immune system and, and reduce that damage. So I've put together several things that you can do. Now, one of the, one of the first things that I recommend is changing your diet. And so one of the, one of the big things that I see among um, patients with Hashimoto's, like this patient here, is gluten sensitivity, or in this case, celiac disease. So you can test for tissue transglutaminase or a gliadin peptide. You can look for these things in your blood, and they can give you a good idea as to where to start. But that's a big thing. So changing up your diet, getting rid of foods that you're allergic to or that, you're, that your body may not be tolerating very well, you've got to dump those because that can just stir it up and, and increase some of the issues that you're having in your, in your GI tract. The second thing is supplements. So the use of targeted supplements such as zinc and selenium, sometimes even iodine. You can use all of these things and they have been shown to help reduce antibodies in, in Hashimoto's, especially selenium in certain patients. Don't just jump into it though. You, you want to learn more about this. I'm just sort of briefly touching on these things. This isn't an all-encompassing uh, discussion here. Number three is the use of hormones or thyroid medication. And so what you, what you see with a lot of patients, or what I see and what other doctors see, is they, they see that their thyroid is sort of normal, but their antibodies are high, but they still feel terrible. They still have all the symptoms of, of hypothyroidism. And so what these, these doctors will do is they'll say, well, let's just wait until your TSH raises enough, then we'll treat you. But there's a lot of patients that benefit, and newer studies are showing this, from treatment sooner rather than later. So treating sooner rather than later is a big deal, especially if, if you already have some damage to your gland. What are you going to do then? Another one is uh, LDN or low-dose naltrexone that can sort of help modulate the immune system. Um, and I have other videos on that. And then lastly, addressing GI issues such as overgrowth syndromes like small intestinal uh, bacterial overgrowth or small intestinal fungal overgrowth or increased intestinal permeability. Now, each of these we could talk for a long time about, so I'm not going to jump into them. But, but uh, I have other videos that go over these topics, but I just want to sort of give you the rundown here. But that's pretty much it for Hashimoto's. I hope that you guys found this really helpful. It's actually 
a pretty complex topic, but um, you, you need to understand the basics because there are things that you can do to start treating right away. You don't have to wait until your body destroys your thyroid gland. In fact, I recommend against that. It's not a good idea. So um, figure out what you can do if you can make any changes. Find someone that can help you identify the issues that you're dealing with and treat and target those issues. And I think you'll, you'll start feeling a lot better. So anyway, that does it for today's. This is lesson number 10 on Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If you guys have any questions, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Just give me a couple days since I get a lot of questions, but I'll do my best to get to those. And I'll see you guys in the next one.